It appears that yesterday I made quite a mess in the excitement of tearing this thing apart, but that's okay. Also, I apologize, but I'm getting my James Earl Jones voice going again. This weather that we're having here is uh, doing a number on me, so. All right, well, I'm thinking we're gonna start ripping this thing apart. I'm excited. You hear that ridiculous humming noise? That's our hot tub. The pump runs, and for some reason, my recording device picks up on it violently, and it drives me nuts. So now I have to go shut the hot tub off so that you're not getting a mmm in your ears the entire time. Let's dive into this giant hunk of metal. I'm thinking we take off our extra mutilation blade. We can trim that up a little bit. Let's find out what that is. Hopefully I have an impact for it, because heaven forbid I do any manual work. Failure to launch on multiple attempts. Oh yeah. Does that go in there? I don't know. That's for another day. And I think that I have the right wrench laying around here some. Oh, there it is. Okay. Time for Operation Blady Removey. Let's go to beast mode. It's going to need it. Not really, but we're going to do it anyway. All right. Yeah. So, plan B. Get out of there. All right, plan B, watch, we got the wheel off and now I'm not gonna be able to get these screws off. That, that'll be my luck. There we go. What do we have here, 13 mils? What else is 13, is that one half? I have no idea. Maybe it's a one half. Oh, it is, best day ever. Education for me today. 13 millimeter and one half. One wrench to rule them all. Oh. Why do you think this blade goes on normally? You think there's a mini mower out there for something like this or a disc bind? I don't know. To be sharpened. Next. Let's remove these. Interesting, is that broken? It is broken. Looks like we're missing a chunk out of the, out of the end there. When we look on the other side, no chunk missing. Does that bother me? No. I'm gonna need some persuasion at this station. So why don't we see if we can just break these loose. They're all 13, AKA one half. Got another blade to sharpen. If any of you are wondering what these are for, I would have to say it's for balancing this whole wheel of chaos. They probably spin it up like a tire machine. It shows up, yep, too heavy on this side. So then someone goes in and beep, 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 drills out some holes, they spin it again, and it's good to go. What's interesting to me is that these holes, wait for it, What's interesting to me is that these holes look like they were drilled by a human. It's not like a perfectly machined, perfectly spaced, perfectly cut hole, you know what I mean? So that would lead me to believe that at the time of the assembly on this machine, they didn't have automation like we do these days, and they may have had to manually balance these wheels. I've said it before, but I think that's pretty sweet. It's almost like a telltale piece of history, even though we're talking about a machine that was built in the 80s. I don't know, I love that kind of stuff. Last time, I made mention of this looking like a pin was coming out. That looks to me like someone used a nail or some, ooh, my apologies. A nail or some type of tack to hold this assembly in. If you look at the other ones, they appear to be roll pins. I'm thinking I'm not gonna take these out because there's really no purpose to do it. However, welcome back. It's been a couple days and we're gonna go ahead and start with little mutilation blade number one. A 
definitely cleaned up nice. This side, sharp AF. This side looks like it takes most of the beating, but I'm gonna touch that up a little bit more. All right, time for number two. Looking good. Okay, so we're on to our last blade here. We've got the double ender, looks like a mini mower blade. My next thought was, can we rotate the blades? But if you think about it, and if you look at it, this will be on the opposite side, but if I move it to the other side, it's still in the same orientation. So no matter what I do, this end is always gonna get chewed on first. Also the fingers, I'm not gonna worry about changing the fingers because for one, If we look at the back side, it's not a threaded insert like these were. Considering the fact we have all 36912, they're all in okay shape, and they don't actually do any cutting, I'm really not concerned about it. I'm sorry to say, we're going to leave it alone. I know, not exciting, not fun. I said I wasn't going to pull one of these pins out or any of these pins out, but I'm thinking we should pull one out and maybe see what it looks like. Let's use our melon this time. Rotate it 180 degrees. Put the punch on the outside. Okay, well, fired it across the room. Luckily I kept my eye on the pin. So the question is, now that the pin is out, what actually comes apart and how does it actually come apart? It's gonna be annoying. Oh, all right, that wasn't so annoying. Here we go. There we have it. We have the main pin there. I see. Now my brain's starting to work. Essentially what retains this pin is the fact that this mechanism here, all of these fingers, cannot move that way, cannot move that way. So the pin stays in place because of the tight amount of space between all these all of these fingers okay so on the outsides we have a washer and we have another washer and we have our finger spacer finger spacer finger okay well now that that wasn't so bad let's go ahead and flip all the fingers around put it back together and then I've made the executive decision that we're gonna go ahead and do that with the rest of them. Because why not? All right, so I marked this with a smiley face because this is where we're starting. So we're gonna do a washer first. Originally, these were in this direction. Have a look here. You can see how we have less of a, a sharp angle here. So we're gonna give so we're gonna do the flippy flippy, and we're gonna go with the more aggressive curve. Now, I don't know, in all honesty, if that will make any difference whatsoever in scooping out the debris. I just figure, who knows how many years this thing's been in service, why not just rotate the tires? So, washer, finger, spacer, 
finger. Spacer with our pin mark. Finger. Washer. And to top it all off, after I rip off the pieces of grass and whatever debris is in there, pin. Come on, pin. Work with me here. I don't know. Oh, oh, we got it. All right, cool. The BM pin is in. We're in a really lucky situation. We already had the hole lined up. I'm going to reuse these roll pins. Will that cause an issue? I have no idea. Setup number two. Oh, fingers are getting cold. At about 20F right now. Washer, flipped over finger, spacer, flipped over finger, spacer, flipped over finger, washer, pin. I just heard one of our horses neighing. That should be inside. It sounds like he's outside, so I need to go check on that. All right, well, I thought it was a horse. That should be inside, that's actually outside, but it was not. It turns out that horse was supposed to be outside. In the meantime, I have the circulation of a river in the Antarctic. So, I'm going to warm the hands for a minute, and we'll get back to it. Time for a smiley face. All right. On to the next. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this off, I'm going to pull the pin out, I'm going to rotate all these fingers, and then I'm going to do what everyone should do, and put a new nail in here. Alright, we are back for another day. I believe where we left off, we took all the roll pins out, took all these pins out, turned the flails over so that we have a new, more aggressive surface. M may not even matter, I have no idea. But uh, you know what, why not? Well then I was enjoying some of the comments going on and somebody made said to make sure that these are free and that they can rotate out and if not then they won't evacuate the wood chips. So they're all pretty good except yeah I think they're all, well that one's a little on the stiff side. Anyway I'm not happy with it so I'm going to rip them all out again. Here we go. Got the finger saver, 5,000. Could I just spray some lube on here, call it a day? Yes. But what will that do? It'll attract dirt and possibly could make the situation worse. Use my grill scraper here. finish up the last two things. Oh, pin in. Get in there. You know you want to. There we go. Oh, wow. 
What kind of luck is that? Why do I have a brass hammer this time? Okay. And repeat. Although this time, we're going to add some eyebrows. Happy eyebrows. All right. And we're back for another day. <laughs> oh, man. I got one of these done, and that was it. I have an upper respiratory infection that is really dragging me down. And I am trying to get this video out. I try to do one every week. I'm past a week. I haven't even done any editing. So bear with me. Family stuff going on. Weekends busy. Traveling, etc. We will get this done soon. Off we go. So there's a gateway. We'll call it a gateway. That's funny. You remember gateway computers? <laughs> we'll go on a little tangent here. Gateway computers made by a farmer. Or originally designed by a farmer. One, two, three. Get out of... I got nothing. I think I've always had a little bit of persistence in OCD. You know, when I was a kid, and by kid, I mean when I was in high school, I had a drafting class, and boy, oh boy, did I love that class. We'd sit down and learn about the use of triangles, and <laughs> someone out there is like, oh boy, you went to high school and learned about triangles. Good for you. But no, no, we, uh, we learned about, you know, the horizontal bar and, and, uh, drawing everything in 3D geometric tolerances and all that good stuff. And I loved that class. And I remember, coming back in a minute. Uh-oh. It's almost like we lost spark, but we lost torque. I guess we could lose spark and lose torque. I'm not even drunk on pain meds right now. So anyway, we're doing this object, right? And I get done, I get almost done, almost to the very end. And I realize that I made a big boo-boo. Yep, there we go, looking good. And I realized that I made a boo-boo. And that boo-boo would require me to erase the entire drawing and do it over again. And my instructor was like, yep, yeah, just go ahead and erase it. Redo what you need to do. And don't worry about it. And I was like, you know what? I'm I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get a new sheet of paper. And I'm going to start all over. So I've already done most of it. And um, the hell's my paint pen? So mind you, we're getting toward the end of our class. And, and I'll tell you what. I zipped my way through it. And I got it done perfectly. And I found out a couple years later, and I say this extremely humbly, don't think I'm a pompous person, okay? I found out years later that, <clears throat> that he had used many of my drawings as examples for the class. And I'll tell you what, you want to get confidence, you want to feel good about persistence and doing a good job on something, integrity, if you will, that did it for me. Anyway, the whole point is, why am I tearing this apart again? Well, because I'm not happy with it. At this point, I'm just talking to myself. I don't even know what the heck is going on. And let's spice up my voice a little bit. Because I've been probably putting most of you to sleep with my sickness voice. Let's pin it up. Do the Pinny McPin Pin. Pin Pinny Me, Pin Pinny Me, Pin Pin Peru. Let's pin this shit and get it all through. You can tell I listened to a little bit of Mary Poppins. Boop. Boop. All right, we're happy. You ever listen to how violent the stop is on one of these? I love this drill. This wasn't my father-in-law's. But when you hit it, when you let go of the trigger, the stop is so violent. I can hear the gears in there just half the time. I'll, I'll squeeze it, let go of it gently. And let it coast down without doing the full lock. I don't know. It just uh, gets my mechanical tingles going, I guess you could say. All right. I'm done playing. 
here we go finally so I found a nail that I put on the wrong side of course that I believe will work for us give it a little stretch and a bend well good news is my Dremel's still plugged in wherever it went in the pile of cluster there it is oh I just tipped my case upside down little sandpaper wheels everywhere oh yeah feeling the torque it sends sparks right at our faces all right we are in business because that is not coming out it is another day yet again got myself some antibiotics if I do recall, we finished this up, and you know what I forgot? Can't believe it, but I forgot the smiley face with the eyebrows. There we go. That's all better. I think it's time we put our slicers bike on. So we have our choppers, we have our broken one. I think it's going to work okay. B. Metis. There's that JB. JB Metas? I don't know, but look at that shine. It's a bit chilly today. We're in the high 20s. My fingers will ultimately get cold very quickly as they normally do. So we're going to put our washer on the back, put our nut on the back. I'm sure you get the idea of how to put on a locking washer and a nut, but. Hold on, check this out. Oh yeah, there you go. Bla <laughs> blasted the box and put a hole in it. It was a strange day on a Sunday when a man was charged with attempted assault using an impact gun and a wrench. Get this guy back on here. Were those proud before like that? Those stick out like that before? Hmm. I don't remember. I took a look and yep, they stuck out before. I think we are ready to go on there. Did you know that your body likes carbon monoxide more than it likes oxygen? Isn't that awesome? <clears throat> That's why it's so dangerous. Your body will readily absorb carbon monoxide quicker than it absorbs oxygen. Did you also know that carbon monoxide takes a long time to get rid of in your body? Which is also why it's so dangerous. So you can get essentially saturated with carbon monoxide to the point where every time you're around it, it makes you sick. Isn't that nice? Way to go, bodies. Way to suck in the stuff that you really just don't like. There we go. So, that's your safety tip for the day. When you're running a little propane heater like this, it still gives off carbon monoxide, even though it burns cleanly. Just be careful. Our spinning wheel of terror is ready to go and yes this is still off don't worry I didn't get the footage but these two pins that go here and here hold this guard in place so that you can't so that you can't put your little phalanges in there and lose them so just something to note. <clears throat>
Okay, so I think we are just about ready to zip on the front cover in this big chunk of metal here. Time for a quick video review. I want to see if the bolts went in that way or that way. Honestly, does it matter? Nope, not at all. I took a quick look. Bolts need to go in this direction. So the hex head faces the engine. Also, one thing I noticed is that some of them had the washer on the bolt head side, which I do not believe is correct, and some of them had the washer on the nut side. And if memory serves me correct and a little bit of common sense, your washer should go next to your nut. So that's what we're going to do. In we go. And this goes like so. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure that's not really supposed to look like that. So I'm just going to take a hammer, sort of flatten this out a bit. Bringing out the BAH for this job. I think that'll work. Help level it a little bit in the front. huh? There we go, it's a little more level. Not that it's really crucial for it to be level, but I'm sure the oil system appreciates it a little more. See that little dimple? That's a way of making it a, a nylock nut without nylon. I am missing the other the knob on the other side, but uh, what's what's Puddin say at Puddin's Fab Shop? If one won't hold it, two never woulda. Let's check out our MISC hardware container here. Because I think, well looky here, no, oh, no, it doesn't have a bolt inside of it. It would be ideal to have both of those clamp downs on this system just for extra safety. I found this and this and I do believe that these came from a Craftsman application if I'm not mistaken and it just so happens to thread onto here. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to thread it all the way through. Let's fast forward and get it all the way in there. Happens to have a nice Phillips head on it there, and then take this, put this on here, use the appropriate tool. I think this was a tractor knob for setting your three-point stop, but if I haven't used it up to this point, I'm not going to use it. Let's see if we can find a fender washer or two to match with the other side. Those are too big. Huh. I bet I can find one in there. Not perfect, but I do believe it'll do. Oh yeah. Is it attractive? No. Is this machine attractive? Nope. It's perfect. There we go. 
Ow, something just popped in my hand. All right, let's get our metal cover, our metal, I don't know, ring on there. Yeah, that goes there, that goes there. It'd be sweet to know where that hardware is. Made a mark in yellow. It's to not want to come off easy. It's probably not going to want to go on easy. I do have an idea. That worked out all right. All right, that worked out okay. Socket on an extension. Got the heater fired up again. Basically just rip this out last time, we'll just force it back in this time. There we go. Found our washers. Well, I think the time has come. Let's see if we can find some branches to mutilate. I did have a comment recently, something along the lines of, For God's sake, man, fix the governor linkage. Okay, um, I did find in a forum that somebody was rebuilding an engine just like this, and this, this linkage was actually straight. Now, if I straighten this out, and I have zero control of throttle, then we know that... It's not correct, and we need a shorter one, most likely. So we'll play with it, see what happens. If it runs like trash, I'm just going to bend it back for now, and we'll live with it. All right. Oh, hello there. Excuse me, Mr. Wiggles. Let's trudge out near the fire pit, see what we can do. Well, we made it out to the fire pit, and uh, whew, dragging this thing through leaves and snow and all, all kinds of other stuff when you're not in good shape kind of takes it out of you so step one is just going to be will it explode will this thing fly apart and grenade so we're going to fire it up i want to let it warm up for a little bit and then from there we'll bring up the rpm and see what happens so do about half throttle do some choke oh hey remember <laughs> Remember what I installed? Yep, smart. I'm gonna have to let this sit for a little bit. Be right back. It's been sitting for a bit. Hopefully the fuel's made it way, made its way down to the bowl. Choke. And rip. There we go. A little smoky on startup.
Okay. Um, does it work? Yes. Yes, it does. It works decently. Uh, it's definitely making better chips than it did before. When I first got it, it was mostly just powder. Now we're getting actually decent sized chips. Um, just a side note, uh, do I want to use this ever again? No, absolutely not. I, I do not ever want to use this again. This thing is terrifying. It's violently loud. When you put a stick in, it vibrates so bad that it actually hurts your hand. So you put the stick in, you got to leave it there. And then if the stick, you know, is old and dry like these were, and I made sure they were old and dry and not frozen, uh, they blow apart. Let's go talk about it in the shop. So a side note, if you ever buy these from uh, Amazon, people said they leak externally. Well, that would be why I smell gas. So don't buy from whatever, I don't even know what manufacturer this was, but I got them off Amazon for pretty cheap. So get what you pay for. Man, I'll tell you what, I was going to do a cute little engines of slow motion video with this thing and see what it sounds like when you're mutilating wood, but I don't want to do it. <laughs> I just, I am not a fan of this, so we'll, we'll save it for something a little more exciting. All right, so I pulled the pin out, I lifted up our cover here, and I'm curious to see... Yes, spark plug wire is off. I'm curious to see how our sharpening job still looks. Well, I mean, it still looks like a nice sharp surface. So it made it through a few sticks in the dead of winter without uh, falling apart. And that's the broken one too. Let's roll it over some more. Yeah, there's the other one. Still looks, I mean, all things considered, you can tell it, uh, just a second here. I mean, you can tell it took uh, some hits because it's chopping wood, but it's still, still pretty sharp. I don't imagine the blade on the front did a whole lot of anything for this particular round. There it is. Focus. There we go. Yep, still looks brand new or brand sharpened. There we go, there's the other half. Yeah, it still looks fine. Will it run? Yes. Will it mutilate wood? Yes. Am I comfortable using this machine? If I really had to. It's just, uh, it's not fun to use. But it gets the job done, and if this is something that you need, if it's something that works with you and your property, and you need to chop up a bunch of sticks and branches, well, then this is the device for you. On a side note, Thank you for the notes on the linkage from the few people that said something last after the first video. I appreciate that. As I said, I do take your comments and I, I look them over. In the future, I'm hoping to do a uh, what you asked for video. So we're talking about, somebody had mentioned how I probably wrecked the idle circuit because of a video that was done by Terrell Fixes All. I'd like to address that. I want to address the home light chainsaw and the air filter that I installed incorrectly. I bought some duck bill one-way check valves. I'd like to put those in. I'm out of gas. Bummer. I might, depending on how ambitious I'm feeling, uh, attack the home light generator again. And we're talking about, I didn't clean the carb last time. I may do that. I got ripped up one side and down the other for the way I uh, did my backwoods fix of making the exhaust valve close, I may just go ahead and dive into that engine and fix it correctly. So we will see. Anyway, I'm done talking. I'm sure 90% of you have stopped watching at this point. Thank you, and we will see you next time. Don't forget, wood chippers are dangerous. Okay, see you later. I just found out something interesting, and I'm curious how many people were probably yelling at me in the comments. This needs to be installed this way. I had it installed like this, thinking it was some type of guard. So those fingers do have a purpose other than just sweeping. They actually come outside of that guard. They are not just sweepers, they are also additional mutilators. And we just learned something new. One more thing to look at.
I am missing the other um, knob. Jeez. Come on. Yes, knob. It is a knob. Oh, upside down. Plan B <clears throat> is put on your. Uh, Well, kind of helps to put the socket on there that I hit with a hammer and threw somewhere and probably put away even though I didn't want to put it away. There you are. No. <laughs> it's not you either. My first day. Really? None of these work? What the hell? Got another blade to sharp. Pen. Sharp pen. All right, so... <coughs> oh, good Lord. But... Uh, considering the fact we, uh, <coughs> <coughs> oh, where's my beer? 